Oh, Dr. Mao's here. I'm telling you, um, living in Africa is beautiful. It's, uh, it's, I mean, I, I mean, Jesus, I mean, went to Africa when things got hard in, in, uh, in the Middle East. But sometimes uh, Africa, you know, can be challenging on the internet side, you know. So I apologize for the late start. Those who have been queued up, to, you know, wait, ready to hear the word of the Lord as we talk about the gospel of the kingdom. And the marketplace with an amazing special guest that I'll be introducing in a very little while. She is hot. She's on fire. My God, God does not make them any better than this apostle I'm about to introduce you to in a little while. But I do apologize for the late start. But it's all, it's better. It's it, but it, but it's better. It's better than not starting at all. So we thank God that we're able to go live here. Amen. Praise God. So for those of you that are wondering where is Dr. Mouse today. I'm in Africa, the Republic of Zambia fighting with the internet, but I just broke through because I'm, I'm a breakthrough man. I believe in a breakthrough. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today, it's going to be like another one of our shows. We believe in imp this ministry is about impartation to the point of the supernatural breaking out in your life. The kingdom of God is only uh, manifested in power. It's not just in word, but it's in power. So get ready to receive the power to manifest the kingdom in your marketplace assignment. Uh, it's going to be a very powerful time. The woman of God is going to come up here. She is a spiritual daughter of the late Dr. Miles Monroe. So you know what she's carrying. She and I have got a, a, a connectivity, a connection to my Dr. Miles Monroe, you know, when he was alive. And so, you know, she, you know, but boy, did she, did she, did she remain with a mantle from the man of God to uh, for cultural transformation through the marketplace. So today, you want to hear me and this guest go back and forth. The anointing is real. The change will be real. And I want you to get to make some noise. Make some noise by letting people know that the mouse is live on Facebook, on YouTube, is live, and, they do, and uh, is live, and it, there's going to be a moment of real impartation at the end of the teaching because I, I refuse to come to you live and then I leave you in the same place. I want to I wanna release, I want to drop a miracle. I want to be able to pray for you so there's some supernatural things that begin to happen. That's why many of you follow this ministry and uh, you know that they, it's a ministry of impartation in real time by the Spirit of God. Amen. So listen, uh, I want you to watch this uh, promo we have together for the meeting I'm doing with, uh, with, uh, with this woman of God, Apostle Angela Pipersburg. We are doing a meeting together in Aruba. I've always wanted to go to Aruba, and it took this woman of God to take me to Aruba, you know, where still I got a groove back on, okay? But I'm going to be getting a groove in the Holy Ghost. It's going to be a groove in the kingdom. I mean, Aruba has never felt, uh, it, Aruba has never felt what it's about to feel in a month, you know, when we're going to, in the month of July, I'm telling you, Aruba has never felt what's about to feel in just a, a couple of months. I mean, I'm going to drop it in Aruba like it's hot. So if you're in the islands, St. Lucia, St. Martin, Bahamas, those who follow Dr. Miles, Miami, easy. come on, come and get kingdom with a lot of sunshine, a lot of greenery, a lot of blue water. It's going to be an amazing time. But in the meantime, let people know I'm live and on YouTube, you know how to share. I mean, go, I mean, just click on this video and share to your contacts. Come on now. And if you're on Facebook, it's even much easier to share the feed by the Spirit of God. So I'll be right back after this announcement so you can meet our guests and we will talk about the gospel of the kingdom and the marketplace. To the islands of the sea. Welcome to the island. Come from the river. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious. 
Wow, my God. I mean, I mean listen, I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to bring this uh, apostle, Dr. Angela Pipersberg. You know, I mean, I mean, let's bring her on. Let people see this anointed woman of God, you know, that carries the kingdom uh, like nobody else I know. I mean, very few uh, women are packing the kingdom like Dr. Angela Pipersberg, an apostle of the gospel of the kingdom, spiritual daughter of the, of the late Dr. Miles Monroe, and the founder of the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce. Listen, Kingdom Chamber of Commerce with, with, with business people connected to it from around the world. I just introduced one of my Jewish sons who's a doctor in New York as a unit to jump in. And he told me, Dr. Angela, he's loving being connected to the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce. Woman of God, welcome. God bless you. Hey, kingdom greetings, kingdom greetings, man of God from Hawaii. <laughs> wow, wow, man, man, listen, uh, you are in Hawaii at Increase Summit with my friend, Dr. Bob Harrison. Yes, 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 yes. Dr. Bob and uh, and Sharon, where it's like, what, 4.30 or 4.40 in the morning to God be the glory. But we're just grateful and just so thankful to God for what he's doing here on planet Earth and the increase that's taking place on this beautiful island. My God, I'm so excited, woman of God. Listen, you know, um, I, I was so honored, you know, to have met you a couple of years ago. And when we found out that we had a common spiritual mentor, Dr. Miles Monroe, I mean, we, I mean, we were like, what? No wonder we like each other. You know, it was just so beautiful. You know, I remember a meeting when I was in the Bahamas. You know, I, I met the, 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 you know, you know, Dr. Miles Monroe, you, you know, they, you had a funny side to him too, you know. Yes. You know, and when I introduced uh, when, when, when my, I remember I went to see him with my, uh, my uncle was a captain, min, who was a minister of finance at the time in the Republic of Zambia, who was also on the board of trustees for Itwala, and we're in the Bahamas, and, the, and then he said, hey, this is my nephew, Dr. Francis Miles, he stopped, he was picking some food, he said, my, what? He said to me, listen, Francis Miles, I, I said, I want to tell you something, never forget, never forget what I'm about to tell you, never forget what I'm about to tell you, and then he whispered in my ears, he said, Anybody by the name Mouse is special. I don't care what they tell you. You know, I just laughed. And that became my connection point. You know, I miss him greatly. And I know you do. I do. I do. There's not a day. And for his birthday, I wind up posting something on my Facebook page. But there's not a day, Apostle. There's not a day that I don't think about him. And, um, and there's not a day. You know, when it comes to mentorship and, and walking with someone yes. like like him and um, and how he poured into us and how he prepared us for this kingdom assignment and yes, the wealth that he left, um, that he deposited on the inside of me, my husband or children. Um, when, when someone teaches you the secrets of the kingdom, come on, it, it, it's priceless. And, uh, and so I think, I, I just thank God for him. And so this last birthday touched me a little bit more um, because I realized uh, uh, the role that he played in my life so much so apostle that I wrote a book for him aligning with your destiny connector. Wow. Because it's not just a, um, a common like um, 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 meeting. It was divine. It was divine. It was a divine hookup created and set up by the almighty for us to encounter Dr. Miles Monroe and uh, Mom Ruth, and for us to be disciples. And being a disciple of Dr. Miles Monroe, for those of you who knew him, wow. it was not a um, was not a casual thing, right? It was, I mean, because he's such a visionary, and when he blows, he blows like a dragon. And so, you know, the closer you are to him, you know, the more you know, and the fact that you had to be ready at all times. And, um, and I remember one time in New Jersey where he publicly rebuked me, like publicly, man of God, publicly in front of everybody, rebuked me to the point that I thank God for the Holy Spirit because I recognized that it would have been at that point that I could have turned and gone into a different relate, into a different direction, and we would not be having this conversation today. And so wow. when you are a student and when you're under the tutelage, we have to understand the importance of being humble. We have to understand the importance of what it is to walk with a man or a woman of God that God has oil on and, uh, and that God has put them in, a, in your life in order to prepare you 
for your assignment. A lot of people, they're too touchy. They're moved by their feelings. And so if, if, you're, if we're walking together and you say something that Who's I don't, up? immediately the person don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. But if you understand that in the kingdom, that there are people that God has assigned you to walk with, to prepare you for that greater assignment, then you humble yourself and then you walk with that person. And so we were called to serve him and we're grateful and so thankful to God. And I love what he would always say every time his plane landed in New Jersey. He said, as now I've seen my daughter and my son, I don't have to worry about anything. And we were always ahead of him, always ahead of him, always steps ahead of him. He would be like, whatever, we knew how he flow. And so it's being able to be in that flow. So I'm grateful. And I'm truly, truly thankful. Well, listen, Seth, I hope you got that. that. Many of you are being taken out of your position, of your, your destinies, of your, your powerful destinies, kingdom destinies, because we live in a generation that carries its feelings on its shoulders. You cannot walk in the kingdom. As a matter of fact, woman of God, you can't walk with Jesus with your feelings on your shoulders, okay? I mean, because in order to develop you for the work of the kingdom, and there's some things that have been chiseled out of us to be able to work in the kingdom. That's why today I'm so excited that we're going to be talking about the gospel of the kingdom and the marketplace. You know, woman of God, my life changed. You know, here's, uh, here's out of the mouse Monroe. You know, uh, I've asked my producer to try to find a photo of him. Maybe we might show him just out of honor. I mean, I just feel I'm feeling mouse Monroe-ish today. Okay? Me too. <laughs> I'm feeling mouse Monroe-ish today, you know. You know, and you'll be amazed how many times people uh, call me by his name. I'm saying, oh, no, I'm Francis Miles, but they, it's amazing. But I think it's an honor even to mistake me for that great giant of the faith, you know. Uh, but the Bible, uh, one of the the, 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 the the things that Dr. Miles Monroe used to you one of his favorite scriptures, I mean, he had quite a lot, but the one that was his, seemed to be the, the axis of his, of, of, of his ethos. Yeah, he's a man of God. You're going to mess so, me up now, Pastor. You're going to mess me up. Now you're going to mess me up. We don't talk about the kingdom without giving honor to the father of the mess of the kingdom. You know, because then there will be an anointing that connects dynasties today. Because there's an anointing that's going to fall upon people. There are people right now, who are Angela, who are right now working a job. But by the time the kingdom gets a hold of them, they'll be owning a company. That's why they need to understand why I brought you here today. It's not just about Aruba. The reason we're going to Aruba is because we are trying to raise kingdom entrepreneurs. And I'm going to let you speak to that later because you are, you are the owner of the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce. But Dr. Miles Monroe did two things for me. And I want this picture over there. Okay, and because there are people who are following me and following you, Angela, who do not know about this giant and the message he pioneered that they are weak in their faith because they haven't read one of his books. So if you are watching us and you've never read a Dr. Mouse Monroe book, slap yourself and then slap yourself and then go and find him at Amazon.com. Get you that book because it will be the change you are looking for. But there are two things he said that changed my life. He said this, he said, the problem with Christians is that they treat the Bible as if the Bible is a religious book. He said the Bible is not a religious book. It is the constitution of a kingdom. It is the constitution of a government. My God, that thing went in my spirit. And I'm like, oh, my God, I, my theology. People love Dr. Miles. They love my books. And I think that people have my books. I'm selling quite a bit. I see it, you know, from the royalty checks. I'm doing quite. A, I'm, I'm doing really good. But the reason my change, my levelating, my teaching change is because that one statement by Dr. Miles Monroe changed the ethos of my levelation. And now I looked at scripture. You know, every time I open my Bible, I'm saying, I'm not saying what is the church trying to tell me. No, I'm saying what is the government of God trying to tell me. You know, when I read scriptures about giving, I don't see uh, me giving in the context of the church. I see myself trading for stock on the on the stock exchange. It's changed everything. It changed everything. 
That's I'm it. not giving an offering to a pastor or or a bishop in with clothes, you know, a bishop, you know, you know, with his agalia. That's what stops people. And how mm -hmm. I see when God gives me an opportunity to even to sow a woman of God, Angela, I'm thinking, okay, God wants me to buy stock in the in something in the kingdom that's about to trade up. How do you say it? How how was how, how, how was your giving changed by just understanding the kingdom? I mean, just let's maybe let's start there, woman of God. Yeah, it, it, it definitely does because you understand that you're giving to a king. And, and first of all, the protocol of the kingdom is that you never come before a king empty handed. Wow. <laughs> you, no, never, no, no. you never come before a king empty handed. And so when you start getting the revelation of the kingdom, first of all, you understand one, that you have been adopted into this royal family, two, that you're royalty. Three, that the only message that Jesus preached was about the kingdom. That's right. And so, and, and so when you go into when you when you go into the word, when you go into Matthew 4 17, he says, repent. Repent for the kingdom of the, 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 the kingdom is here, the kingdom is at hand. You know, and 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 so it's very, very I have my Bible in front of me. It's very, very, very important that we understand that when it comes to giving, see, the thing about it is that we want to give to God the way how we tip. We want to tip God. But when you get the revelation of what it is to be able to uh, uh, that, that wealth is your birthright, wealth is your birthright. And now we have the ability to be able to love on God because he first gave and you get that revelation, man of God, that one, he has called you to be wealthy. You never come before him. Just ain't. I mean, there's certain amount I would never give because of that revelation. Oh, I'm, I, I know what you're, where you're going with that. Go ahead. Because of that revelation. So, 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 so starting with Matthew 4, 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so understanding the priority of the kingdom, the priority of the kingdom, he said, the only thing that I want you to focus on, I want you to give your all in is the kingdom of God. That's what his message is all about. And so we need to be able to understand and really, really, really uh, ask the Holy Spirit to be able to share with you, give you the keys, open the eyes of your understanding to be able to get the revelation of the kingdom, revelation that you are, that there is a king and we're under the dominion of the king. When you get that, when you start seeing that and, 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 and in the, the, um, the, 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 the way how many of us have brought up, you know, if you're brought up under under monarchy, there was a period of time where I grew up under monarchy. Yes. When you grow up under monarchy, it's different than when you're growing up under a president, right? And so, even the the way how you this you you don't even speak badly about the monarchy, right? Here we could say anything we want to say about our president, about our prime minister. There's no honor there. But when you get the revelation of the kingdom, man of God, there's honor. And so we honor the king. And how do you honor the king? You honor the king with your giving. Why? Because of the love that you have for the king. You don't come to him just any old way. And, and, and you did a teaching on this on Saturday about your yes. priesthood. Yes. Man, that messed me up when it comes to the marketplace. Wow. Listen, our desire, my husband and I, the more we learn the kingdom, the more we understand that wealth is our birthright, is to be able to do more for the kingdom of God in the area of our giving. Jesus. In the area of our giving. So that's it. You never go before a king empty handed. And, you know, and some of us uh, uh, could relate to that even on a, on, a, on a more practical level. When we were growing up, because I grew up with my, my grandparents, you never went to someone, someone's home empty handed. You always brought, whether it's oranges or something, right? I grew up in a third world country. So you understand the importance of it's not having to be wealthy, guys, in order to be able to bring something to the king. You bring because of the love that you have for the king. You bring some because of the love you have for the person. You bring it or maybe just out of sheer respect. When I come into your presence, I am coming into the presence of a king. You know, it's the queen of Sheba. It's not because of what the person has. The queen of Sheba, when she went to see King Solomon, she went loaded. 
Come on here, somebody. She wow. wouldn't have needed, and it's not because she would have been like, well, King Solomon, he's very wealthy. He doesn't need what I have. No, what she did is that the revelation of the fact that she needed to make an exchange. And so we got to be able to understand in the kingdom of God, it's about an exchange. And in order for you to tap into the anointing that's on that person's life, there has to be an exchange. One of the things that I teach in the kingdom chamber of commerce that you just don't sit with somebody and say, let me pick your brains for free. <laughs> no, you're going to make an exchange because now when you make an exchange, you now have access. No exchange, no access. No access, no exchange. And so it's no different that when you hear the word of God being taught or being shared by a vessel that God is using, yes, you could take notes, but I guarantee you that it will never manifest until you make an exchange, until you wow. make a financial exchange. Because if there's ever an area that the enemy wants to hold God's people back is in the area of their giving. And so we must understand, guys, I believe that my life changed when I met Dr. Miles Monroe. I did not know what God had years ago. He said there was a, a, a um, vision. I believe it's a vision to this day. I wrote it in the book. I still can't figure it out. But he said that um, I'm going to come in contact with a man by the name of Dr. Miles Monroe. And when I do, not only will my life change, but everybody around me, their lives will change. And then the day came when that happened, a pastor reached out and said, I don't know you, but I heard about the work you're doing in the marketplace. And I believe the Lord wants me to connect you. What was God doing there? He was saying, you don't have to go out of your way to make a name for yourself. When God is ready for you, he will find you. My name is Angela. So there's a prophetic assignment to my name, right? And so when he needs me, I'm a messenger. He will send for yeah. me. He needed me today. He sent for me. He needed me in Hawaii. Bob, they sent for me. To God be the glory. And so while I was in that meeting, we sowed a seed. And what we did not realize is the harvest that would come as a result of the seed. It was my first time, man of God, hearing the teaching of the kingdom. But I always felt in my life that something was missing. Have you ever felt that way? I've always yeah. felt in my life that something was missing until I sat in that room that night. And I'm telling you, I, I heard something that just made everything on the inside of me just go off. And I said, God, this is it. And I said, I'm going to pursue the kingdom with everything that I have. And that's what Seek Ye First is all about. To be able to seek means that you're in passionate pursuit. And so when the time came to give an offering, you know, my husband and I, that's a whole story because Dr. Miles, he said, we only have a few envelopes. And so they brought the envelopes up. He said one envelope per family. By the time Paul got back and he took the, I've never seen somebody take an offering like this. He took the envelope and he placed it in the pocket of his jacket and he prayed over it and he tapped it. I said, oh, I want that. I'm taking that with me. So when Paul went up to get the envelope and he came back, all of this is recorded, y'all. And he came back and, and, and I said, place it in your jacket pocket and we're going to tap it like the way Papa did. He wasn't Papa then, but Dr. Miles did tap it. And then when Paul pulled it out, there were two envelopes. That was a miracle. And I said, what wow. in the world are we doing with two envelopes? It's what it was, it was a double opportunity to give. And so many times we, I, I'm getting that revelation now, man my of God. God, my God. It's come on, woman of God. opportunity for us to give. And so many times we want to come in and, and, and it's the flesh that's coming forth. But if we step back and allow the spirit. So Paul and I agreed, everything was being recorded on TBN. Paul and I agreed to go give. So he took the one. He said, what are we going to do with the second envelope? He said, no, we're going to keep the envelope. He, we're going to take it home. That didn't sit well with me. As husbands and wives, you know, we know how to speak in code, That's right? Cool. Even though you could be on camera, you're speaking in code. And so he came back and I was like, no, we got to give. And I'm speaking in the spirit because I'm a giver. I love to give. You know why? Because the giver lives on the inside of me and, and I get satisfied you know how this is how I get my satisfaction when I can give. And so we made an agreement. And so went back and forth. And he was like, I'll take it home. No, we'll keep it here. No. And he said, you go give again. And listen, guys, for those of you that are on here, I'm sensing an anointing right now. I'm sensing an anointing right now. When you give again, you may have been like, well, I've sown. Well, the Lord is saying, I want you to sow into this word. 
because guys, we sold into the, the, the work that was happening that night, a huge seed. The largest seed we had sown up until that point was in Benny Hinn's ministry, it was Benny Hinn and Marilyn Hickey. And I told you, man of God, the impact they had on our lives. And so here we are again about to sow. And so Paul said, now let's sow again, second time, sow again. If you have not sown, if you've been, I've been sowing, I've been sowing, and I haven't seen anything, I want to encourage you to sow again. And so we went ahead and we sowed again. But this time I told Paul, okay, take the envelope up. And my husband, this, I'm telling you wives, I don't care what your title is, what your position is, I'm telling you, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through your husband, right? He still is the head. There's a governmental order in the kingdom. So my husband said, you go up. I didn't really want to go up. He said, you go up. So I went up with the envelope kind of reluctantly. I was new to Dr. Monroe's ministry. And then he started praying. So by then I was like, I want to go home. I want to go see my kids. I'm done. I figure I got what I wanted. And the man of God, then when I came in front of him, um, uh, Apostle, yes. Face to face, I point my envelope to him and he and I said, uh, um, uh, uh, I said, um, the Lord said, uh, what, uh, I pointed the envelope to him and I said, I come face to face with my destiny tonight. I come face to face with my destiny. This is the words that came out of my mouth. OK, he grabbed me and he said, the Lord said, I must help you. He said, doors that the Lord opens for me, he will open for you. He said, wow. if the Lord blesses me, he will bless you. Guys, I still have. And the thing about what I love, what God will do, is that he will have somebody to record that. He had a photographer there that was taking those pictures. And, and I could not let go. My jacket adhered to his. And I kept hearing him say, let go, let go. What I did not know was that seed that I sowed, it was the seed that I sowed, man of God, that actually changed my life. And I believe God, that seed ran into the belly, the earth, the, the womb of the earth. And, and, and everything that God had for me through this man of God became attached and aligned. And so I, I, I fell out in the spirit and I don't do stuff like that. I'm too cute for that. But I had no, I, I had no control. When I got up from there, I just wanted to go home. The man of God who invited me said, I want you to come and I want you to sign his book. When I'm, Dr. Miles went to sign my book, he never looked at me. He never said we had an experience, an encounter. It was as if though he didn't know me. Took a picture and we were done. So we're standing at the altar. He's walking away. He turns back and he said, you too. I thought the you too, too was the couple next to me. He said, no, you too. I guess that was me and my husband. He said, come with me. We go up in the room where all the pastors and bishops are waiting for the man of God. He grabbed the chair. He sat down and he said, what is your vision? And I don't know whatever we told him. He said, you need to come to a conference that I'm having in the Bahamas. He grabbed the fly out of a lady's hands. He said, you're not ready for this. This is for these two. Guys, and I'm telling you from that moment, my life has never been the same because of a seed. Why did I go all the way around this? To be able to tell you the importance, the very thing that the enemy wants to hold back is for you to never get the revelation of the importance of planting a seed, the importance of sowing. See, if you are a child of the king, what you have is not yours right? Wealth is your birthright, but he needs to know that he could get it through you, to you, to get it through you, to advance the kingdom of God. The, the churches right now need money. And guess what? Nike is not sponsoring the church. So what does That's he right. need? He needs you and I, men and women of God, to be able to rise up in our giftings, which I'm going to be teaching on that. I wrote a book, Your Gift, It Makes Room. In the you have Bezalel, right? Wasn't Bezalel one that God used in the, in, 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 in the word with tapestry and, and bring that gifting that you have, that uniqueness into the marketplace and then now causing your gift now to make room for you? Because the thing about your gift is, you know, you're going to uh, 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 refine, you're going to um, uh, um, develop your gift. You're, you're going to refine your gift when you serve your gift. 
And after you serve your gift, now you can monetize that gift. And when you monetize that gift, Deuteronomy 8.18 will be your way of living. For he has given you the ability to do what? The ability to get wealth. Why? So that you could advance the kingdom of God. It's not for us just to just advance our own kingdom. It's for us to advance his kingdom. Why? Because his priority is that we seek the kingdom first. And it's not about us having to think about it. And for a while, I'll be honest with you guys, I was confused. Because I was told you're either a king or you're a priest until I met Dr. Francis Miles and he was like, absolutely not. <laughs> That's he right. Said, you are in the order of Melchizedek, you're born. That's it. That's it. That's it. And so, and so God wants us to be, God wants us to have the wealth. God wants wow. us to go into the marketplace now, now more than ever. If there, if there's supermarkets that need to be built, it should be owned by by kingdom citizens. Wow, woman of God, you know, I, 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 you said something that I want to segue into, but I want, I want because we're talking about the gospel of the kingdom. I just want to read a couple of scriptures, you know, uh, that, that that really uh, animate me every time I read them about the kingdom, about the priority, the valueness of the king, the priority, the priceless of the kingdom. You know, I think that until the kingdom is priceless. Until the kingdom is priority, guess what? I believe that many believers will live outside the economy of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Where is the problem? If you live outside of the, the economy of the kingdom, whatever country you have, you are in, that's all you got. So if the country's political leaders are stupid and they don't know mathem mathematics and finance and they're they are making stupid policies, guess what? Whatever they have, that's what you've got. But when you have made the kingdom a priority, and you've seen the pricelessness of the kingdom, God makes sure that you don't get stuck in the economies of men. Mm -hmm. You pass through the economies of men, but you, are, you, you, you do it in such a way that the kingdom of God is simply transposed over it. I, I, in the book of Matthew 13, uh, uh, Dr. Angela. Uh, right here. This is exactly this, where I am, man of God. Matthew is that 13. right? <laughs> Matthew, I mean... I, I, I mean, for, I, I, I want to read from verse 44. You know, um, again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, mm -hmm. which a man found and hid for joy, for, for joy over it. He goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. This is amazing. I mean, I mean, the, 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 the picture is amazing. A man, you know, finds a treasure hidden in the field. And he goes and sells out everything that he, he held dear before and in order to buy the kingdom. It's talking about us. Before we discover the kingdom, we think that we, I mean, we, there's so many we want to hold on to our jobs, we want to hold on to our little, you know, whatever money we think we have now, we think that's all we've got. But the day we discover the kingdom and we realize how valuable the kingdom is, we will sell every allegiance to everything here on earth in order to hold on to the kingdom. Dr. Angela, that's where Francis Mouse lives. I bent my plow. I am a, I, hey, listen, you know, listen, don't be deceived. I don't, listen, I am a, I'm a black man who is employing people around the world in different colors. Talk to me, somebody. Why? I couldn't do that before the kingdom. I took the government. I, I, who, what the kingdom did that to me. When I discovered the kingdom, I realized all that I was holding on to, you know, was was holding on to was was sweet was sweet and bit by the devil. What I thought was what I needed was what was limiting me. Man, oh God, I I I I mean, I I'm like like you. I said, God, I don't want to die, and meet Jesus, Jesus. and He tells me, son. You left ninety-five percent of the kingdom on the table. Mm. I, you know that. No, I, I want to explain. I mean, I said, Lord, whatever it takes. I, I, I bent the plow. I live for the kingdom. If God, I was in, I was in, I was in Kenya. I mean, I, I mean, I was in Kenya. I was passing through there because my friend, Dr. A, a, a Guillermo Modenaro, was doing a massive crusade in Kenya. I passed through there, and and. Uh, uh, to support him. But in the process, I end up linking up with some very powerful people. I don't want to mention because they are digging that is in Kenya. If I mention their name, everybody will know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But one of them is running a, a foundation. 
that is reaching women who are incarcerated, who are there for a long time, but the children are starving because mom, they have no dad, but the mother is in jail. And so they began a program to be able to, to uh, they began a program for stitching that has become so successful, you know, that these mothers who are incarcerated are able to be paid a little bit. They are able to put food on their table in prison. I mean, almost had tears coming down because I could just see these women who made a mistake, but now they are in jail. But then he said, but we don't have, there are so many prisons where women are incarcerated. We are only working in five. And I asked them, I said, how much does this cost for you to roll out a program and successfully, what does it cost to adopt a prison? They said, well, it will cost about $10,000 to adopt a prison. I said, I, said, I said to myself, only? He said, yeah. And the Holy, Spirit, uh, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said to me, Francis, remember when I said, when I was in prison, you came to see about me? What are you going to do? I won't tell you. I don't want to be bragging. But, but in the spot, the Lord said to me, I want you to adopt. He gave me a number. Okay? Apostle, it was a number. I think it is in the, in the, in the six-figure. It says, that's how many prisons I want you to adopt. So I came. I didn't go to Kenya to dump that kind of money in, in the Kenya. But see, when you live in the kingdom, you realize what you, what you think is yours. It, that is not yours. So if the king speaks, why am I arguing with my king? That's it. But here's yeah. the funny thing. As soon as I did that, a business deal opened up that's out of Kenya. And my God, <laughs> what, a, what I'm about to invest in those women's prisons will look like a job compared to what the king opened up after my obedience. Jesus. See, this is to me why I, I named our program The Kingdom and the Marketplace. I believe many people are failing in the marketplace because they are going out there to hustle, but they haven't touched kingdom. And so That's God is it. like, why should I promote your business? You have nothing to do with the kingdom. That's it. So can you talk to us about why you formed the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce? I know there's a reason for why you formed the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce. Please talk to us about that. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why we formed the, King, the, the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce was because of the economy. The economy of this world is failing, as we could see right now. It's, it's right. dwindling. It's, it's, it's failing. And when I got the revelation of Matthew 6, 32 and 33, when you start looking at that word seek, when I tell you guys, when you're putting aside everything, when he says seek first, what comes before first, apostle? What comes before first? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And so I walked away from a very successful and lucrative uh, uh, career in corporate America with a word from God and a yes from my husband to do the seeking which means that while you are in the process of seeking, there's so many other things that's seeking after your attention. But wow. you need to be able to grab hold of that thing, yes, which, is the, 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 which is the mandate for our king for each and every one of our lives. He said to prioritize the kingdom. Prioritize means that you are now intentionally doing everything that you can to be able to make sure you put the kingdom first. And, and, and so, you know, so that's what I did. So when I got the revelation of the fact that, listen, what I have up until that point, as successful as it would deem that I was getting profit sharing into this company, being groomed to be the youngest general manager um, for this company, is the thing about it is that until a man comes to the place that they return back to the king in, in, in terms of coming into alignment with the kingdom, you don't have anything. What is the greatest tragedy in life? The greatest yes. tragedy in life is not death. The greatest tragedy in life is not discovering your purpose, not discovering your why. The yes. greatest tragedy in life is not functioning in the priority that you're supposed to function in. And I said, God, I will not allow that to happen to me. I said, Father, I the, 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 the greatest mistake in life, man of God, is not knowing what to do. Whoa, my God. The greatest mistake in life is not knowing what to do. And I said, Father, I said, I'm willing to drop everything. You know, in, when I first started out, I was going to law school. And the Lord said, no, I want you to study my law. So that's the only thing so far Ooh. in life. Man, man, listen, wait, 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 wait. That's a, I mean, people, that's a mic drop. That's a mic drop. People, 
you know, uh, Mr. Director, I want you, you to put that on the screen. You know, I don't want you to go to law school. I want you to start my law. That, listen, saying this is huge. My God, this is, have you wondered why we have got so many lawyers and, 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 and the world is still corrupt? And sometimes the biggest, the, the biggest uh, corrupt people in, 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 around the world are lawyers because they know the law and how to get around it. But God says, don't go to law school. Study the law of God. And I'm telling you, I'm a testimony about how God has blessed you and your husband. I'm a testimony. And I want to testify because you may not be able to do it for yourself. But people of God, this is a, this is a woman of God. This is a black woman God has blessed, you know, and it has nothing to do with color because, you know, the kingdom does not co-sign in this, in, a, in, 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 in this, in a, what I call the color nonsense. It means nothing because if you are black without the kingdom, you are in trouble. If you are white without the kingdom, you are in trouble. If you are Indian without the kingdom, you are in trouble. If you are Chinese without the kingdom, you are in trouble. But I'm telling you, I have seen the fruit of what? God has done with her obedience. So, woman of God, I just felt that that was a praise break. I felt there was an anointing being released on somebody. There's somebody watching us right now. You are on a career path, but the more you study, the more anxious and nervous you become because God has been trying to lead you in a different path, but you are terrified because you see you are conditioned to think this degree is my ticket to to the to the moon but i hear the lord saying no your ticket was decided before you were born it is the destiny god ordained for you and if you just do it you know what since we, we you went there i want to just tell my story and then i'm gonna let you continue to talk about the gospel of the kingdom and then how we can use that uh, a disposition to influence the marketplace grow our space in the marketplace i know god is backing us up in, 19, uh, in, in 1991, I was the first one in my family, you know, an impoverished family. I want to be honest. I want to be honest because my father had lost money. He had gone into bankruptcy. He was a very successful businessman. But when he got sick, I mean, he got raided by the, his employees, his family members. He went from owning nine buses to nothing, literally poverty, just coming on us like a bandit. I was sent to live with an alcoholic ankle. So I was not accused of to be away from my dad, but that's what poverty can do. It threw me away, and I found myself in a different place. But so, but I worked very hard because something don't okay. So at that point, education became my only way out of the poverty. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna study like a crazy. I mean, I had nothing, but I studied. I had and I had some brains to spare, Doctor Angela. And I, when I went to to uh, to high school, and then I passed to go to college, and I was. What do you call summa? I mean, I was the top, the cream of the la cream of the people that passed universities. Like, we got a scholarship for you, gotta come. So, for a poor and impoverished young man, you mm. know, with a father who's looking to you to rescue them financially, this was a big day. It was a big deal. I mm. mean, so my father came to, uh, from, from the village to come and celebrate my uncle, who had been a part investor in my education. I mean, they, we came together. It was celebration. But check what happened. What we are celebrating, I hear, I hear this voice. Francis, it's the voice of God. I'm thinking God is about to join the party. I have no idea he, he, he was about to spoil the whole thing. He said, Francis, Rejoice in knowing that you have the brains to go to university. But that's not my path. Woman of God, I felt like I wanted to run out of the building. I said, no, no, no. The de I, mean, I, I mean, no, no, God, you, that cannot be your voice. But when you have trained yourself to hear him and it was so clear, I mean, I, I mean my, my mouth went dry because the people around me, my father whom I respected outside of God, I respected that man because he was a real dad. And I, my mouth went dry. I'm saying, God, are you, are you going to change your mind? He says, no. He says, what I have for you in the kingdom who, and the country of your ultimate assignment, I will take you from here to that country in four years. And in the four years, I will train you in the University of the Holy Ghost. So you can't give yourself to this other university, even though you have passed what you call summa cum laude. You've passed. That's good for you. 
mentally to know in the future you didn't come for ministry because you were a failure at everything else. But I have need of you. I said, God, what do you want me to do? Tears are coming down. He says, tell your uncle and your dad, you can't go. Oh, boy. I turned to my dad. After the ever I said, I have something to say. And they said, yeah, they, they are still smiling because, you know, when, when you are the graduate, everybody's so proud of you. They think I'm just going I'm, I'm, to, I said, I've got I have something to say. Yeah, what do you have to say? And I said, the Lord just spoke. They didn't know where he's going. Yeah, what did he say? I can't go to university because the king of kings has need of me. Ah, my uncle, I mean, he, Dr. Angela, he, I think he cast out of in, involuntarily cast, cast me out. Are you a fool? What did you mean? Is this a joke? Are you, I mean, he, are you kidding? What are you talking about? I said, you assume you are the, you got a scholarship. Oh, he's trying to convince me. I said, trust me. And tears are coming down my eyes. I said, I hear you. But the king of kings has spoken. I can't go to university and become an accountant. I know my path was laid out. Everything looked good. But God says no. And I, I said, but why? He said, because he told me that I have four years to get from Africa to the country of my ultimate assignment. What country is that? Dr. Angela, I did not know it was America. Do you know four years to the day, I landed in Brooklyn, New York. Jesus. And God spoke to me. This is the country you are going to influence from coast to coast. And if you had gone to university, he said that four years would have cost you at least 20 years to recover your destiny in the kingdom. True. But I paid the price. It was a heavy price. I cried for days. But before my father died, Mm -hmm. He told me, Dr. Miles, my father called me Dr. Miles. He said, Dr. Miles, the best decision you ever made is the craziest you, I thought you ever made. I was so angry with you. I felt like you slapped me in the face. I felt like you didn't appreciate all my efforts. I know what you mean by say, seek he face the kingdom. I know the price of that. But here's what I do know, the reward. Today I'm a voice in America. Jesus. You know, before my father died, he, I, I, he lived like a king. I took care of him. I built him a house. I gave him a, a car he, that his job. I gave him cars. Other people who were ministers of the, of the government couldn't even drive what my father was given. Why? Because I followed the kingdom. And he, before he died, he told me, I want you to know, I am so glad. This is the first time in your life I'm going to tell you this, but I enjoy it. I'm so glad you did not listen to me. You listened to your God. Ooh. That was my dad. Because woman of God, I chose the kingdom. That's it. You and I both. I, the kingdom. I gave it all up for the kingdom. Because, because everything up until that point was a counterfeit. Oh, Rabba Sakatala. Oh, Rabba. Come on, speak. It's counterfeit. Until you come into the kingdom, it looks like it's the real thing. And there's a story a friend of mine told me, even when I was at Corporate America, and I had to make that jump. That's and right. I had just, the president had just come down and met with me. I'm giving you profit sharing, da 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 and, and, and then here comes the Holy Spirit. I'm driving down from, you know, Vineland area, and he, he overtook my car with the presence of the Lord that Friday evening. And he said, I have need of you. Ooh. And I'm thinking, I've always had a childlike faith, man of God. Always. My husband will tell you, my faith, and I pray that it always stays that way. Whatever he tells me to do, it doesn't matter how ridiculous or how silly it looks. Whatever he tells me to do, I want to do it. And so I said to, to the father, I said, father, I will do anything you want me to do. But you have to talk to my husband. Wow. Because he said, I need you for my kingdom. Now, I didn't know what it looks like. I was praying and hoping it would not be within four walls. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> and I was praying for. And he said, I have need, I have need of you. And I said, You talk to my husband. And when I came home, I mean, I, I I drove. I mean, it's like the Holy Spirit is just talking. I'm crying. And it was now me having to make that decision. 
Are you going to give up what you have in your hand that you think is the real deal? Or are you going to now come into the fullness of your assignment and who I've called you to be and the wealth that comes with this assignment? And I say, God, I, I want, I only want what you want. So when I got home, my husband's like, what's wrong with you? My face. I mean, clearly I had had an experience and it was like about an hour drive home. And I told my husband, I said, the Lord said he has need for me. And my husband is a numbers guy. And some of you are married to men like that. My husband, show me the money and let me work it out. And my husband said, we're going to fast and we're going to pray. And he fasted and he prayed. And we were willing to walk away from that career in corporate America to be wow. able to now walk into the fullness of my assignment. Guys, and I have never, ever, ever looked back. Did it cost me something? It cost me everything. But on Saturday, I heard from a great man. He said this by the name of Miles Fran Francis Miles. He said, everything that inconveniences you for God becomes a birth offering for God. That's right. Man of God, that touched <laughs> my core. Come on now. My life has been one of great inconvenience, but also great blessings. That's right. And with that, wow. I walked away from a position in corporate America that people only dream of, that my mom could not understand. You're so educated. You're so this. I'm the first one in my family, first one to get born again, first one to go to college, first one to enter law school, first, 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 first. But I recognize that Matthew 6, 32, 33 said, seek first. So it's not an accident that I am the first. And now wow. I'm making first the, the mandate of the king, which is to prioritize and seek first the kingdom of God. And that when he said he needed me for his kingdom, I was willing to walk on water, not knowing where I'm going with all the winds that was blowing, the busterous yes, winds. Yes everything that was happening, the waves, not knowing what tomorrow would hold, but there was an alignment in my life. There was a yes from God, a, a calling from God, and there was a yes from my husband. Hallelujah. And when you oh have God. that... You know, go, go ahead and finish your thought. I want them to say how... I want to talk about Aruba. I want, I want to show them. So I wanted them to say... What following the what what following the king and selling out the gospel of the kingdom has given you a position now to influence kingdom entrepreneurs around the globe with and that's why I'm coming to join you in Aruba. I can't wait for them to see that amazing video because I believe many of them who are watching us and who watch us and those who'll be watching us, the thousands more, because I've got quite a lot of followers. You do, there'll be thousands who watch. I've got very radical followers on YouTube and Facebook, and I'm thankful for that. I want them to say, you know what? I'm going to be there. Already have people in Africa telling me, I'm in Aruba with you, man. I got to be there, but I can feel a mantle calling me. So finish the thought, and then uh, our Mr. Director is going gonna, is gonna to just show you our Aruba conference, and then we talk about it, because I want also for you to release an impartation for those who are watching us to really, really, really enter a kingdom lifestyle like you and I, where the Bible comes alive and works for them. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're going to do. I never end this broadcast without praying for my followers. They know that. So uh, finish your thought and let's talk about Aruba. Right, right, right. So so anyway, so so a word from God and a yes from my husband, guys. Has it cost? It has cost me. But the benefits to serve the king, listen, I would rather be a doorkeeper. Come on here, somebody. Yes, the God. blessings, the doors that God has opened as a result of obedience. And I'm sensing right now that in this dispensation, God is saying he's calling. And for those of you that understand that the very gift that he has placed on the inside of you, that many of us are giving that gift to Pharaoh. And the Lord is saying, I need it for the kingdom. It's time now for you to bring that gifting into the kingdom. It's yes, time right. for us now. It's time for great kingdom advancement, guys. It's time for you to be able to take that gift and, and allow it, give it back to the kingdom. God, how can I serve you with this gift, the very gift that you gave me? We started the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce because we know that the world, the economy of this world is, is quickly diminishing. 
but the king, the kingdom, the, the, the economy of the kingdom of God continues to just grow. It continues to expand. It is not shaken by economic challenges and the supernatural. God gave me the revelation of the supernatural in business and being able to bring that into the marketplace. Guys, the kingdom chamber of commerce, for those of you that are sitting on your gifts, for those of you that God knows that God has called you to be kingdom financiers, you want to be a part of the kingdom chamber of commerce. Go to kingdom chamber of commerce that or, and it's a movement. It's different. It's not for everybody. We're not religious. So it's not about a religion. It's about us taking a rightful place in the marketplace. It's for us to be able to have successful businesses, whether it's a, whatever it is, your clothing, whatever it is, it, what, anything that we're buying right now that is not from the kingdom, we need to have it in the kingdom. And that's what you'll find in the kingdom right now, kingdom chamber of commerce, whatever it is that you need, but it's time for us to switch economies. What you're doing right now is not working and you know, it's not working. That's why you're on this live. That's why this man of God has been uh, touched by the King to be able to even title this message, the message of the kingdom, because it's time for us as believers to have a voice. We're seeing what's happening in the world right now. Right is wrong and wrong is right. You know, but it's time for us to just stand up, lift up our voices, bring our gifts together, collaborate. That's another thing. We got to collaborate and work together to do what? To advance the kingdom of God. There's great, mighty kingdom advancement, but it's time for you to step up and now for you to answer the call of God on your life and to understand that you say to yourself, I will be a financier for the kingdom of God. And the moment you say that, the moment he knows he can trust you with wealth, I said, not seen nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what he's going to do in your life. I'm telling you guys, it's time for you to start that business. Don't wait until AI takes over because AI is going to take over. But guess what? AI can't take over, man of God. AI can't take over our gift. Come on now. Come on. Artificial intelligence. Let me tell you something. We are living in a world where many of you, if you don't enter the kingdom, you will be replaced by AI. And that is what she's talking about. AI is artificial intelligence. You are celebrating it, but it's the year to replace you. But the only person who is irreplaceable, no matter what technology is evolving in the world of men, is somebody who has discovered their purpose in the kingdom. If you have discovered your purpose in the kingdom, there is no AI that can replace somebody who's walking in God's foreknowledge. Kingdom assignments are given by God's foreknowledge. Dr. Mouse, Angela Pipersberger, we are irreplaceable by AI because we are in our kingdom assignments. But if you are in the assignment, if your economy is tied to what men are doing, the economies of men, then AI is coming like a cancer to come and grab what you thought was yours. You'll be replaced. One day you go to job, there's nothing for you because AI runs your whole department. What happens to you? They don't care. You go and find your new thing. But you say, God cares. He loves you. And by speed of prophecy, he has me, two people who had a relationship with a gospel giant called Dr. Miles Monroe, who baptized both of us in the gospel of the kingdom. Are you catching what I'm saying? We are here, I mean, literally blowing the trumpet in Zion. And which is this? Bend the plow. Bend your plow. Bend the plow of the flesh. Bend the plow of depending on man. Bend, burn the plow of depending on this world economy and enter the kingdom. Okay? Prepared for, as a matter of fact, woman of God, I want to read the scripture that Dr. Miles Monroe used to use on qu quite a bit. Now it's mine. You know, mm -hmm. it is uh, uh, Matthew 25. Maybe, Mr. Director, we can put it on the Matthew 25 and verse 34. Only that verse because I think it's amazing. And it literally talks about, it's Matthew 25, verse 34, says, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. My God, it is the kingdom that was prepared for you from before the foundation of the world. My God, what could be more important than something God prepared for you from before the foundation of the of the world? Mm. And that's what me and my sister are living in. Will you join us? Mm, 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 mm. That is powerful, man of God. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Everything that we need. You know, the thing about it, why we don't jump in the kingdom, because we think we're losing. But if we only know that you're gaining, 
You don't lose with God. And one thing about God is that he doesn't just give up information, right? He's not just going to give you revelation. You have to show him that you're hungry for it. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? And when you're hungry, revelation will show up. If you just go into Matthew 13, just go into Matthew 13. You know, here he was, the disciples wanted to know, and they're asking him, you know, you why, why do you speak to them in parables? And he said, it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Come on here, somebody. It is given to you. It is given to me if you want it. He said, for him who has, more will be given. He will have an abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And I love verse 16, man of God. He said, but blessed are your eyes, your eyes and my eyes, for they see and your ears, for they will hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which were seen in the kingdom. Come on here, wow. somebody and have not seen them and to hear those things which we hear come on and have not heard them because the more we hear the message of the kingdom the message dr maz used to say daughter go teach the kingdom go teach the kingdom and i repent because for a while i got distracted and he's like teach the kingdom teach it and the more you teach it the more you pursue him the more he gives it to you but the more you just talk negatively about it he takes it away from you. And so even now, heaven is rejoicing, man of God, that we have made time. You have made time in this platform. And that's why God's about to bless this platform. You're about to see your ministry increase globally like Jesus. never before because you have stopped to put first the kingdom of God. That's his mandate. Nothing else matters. The money, everything will come. But it comes when you seek first the kingdom. He said, seek first. First, be in passionate pursuit of what? Of the kingdom. And when the kingdom comes, he said, all these things, all the things that we run after, it will be added. It's going to chase you. Instead of you chasing it, guess what? It will now chase you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added. Wow. Woman of God, why don't we now go talk about, uh, uh, Mr. Director, I, wanna, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to show the people what's going to be happening in Aruba and then we'll be right back to pray for them and talk about what what talk, talk about why we're doing what we're doing in Aruba so for those in the islands you have no excuse after you see but you don't want everybody really this will be a good time for a wife to tell your husband we're going we're going because some of you you need a second honeymoon all right <laughs> uh, the director you, you let, let's let's show it to the island of the sea Welcome to the island. Come from Caribbean. Hold on. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious. I didn't know there are places that beautiful on earth, but God, that is a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, what's going to be happening will make it 10 more, ten times more appealing. So tell them what, the, the, about this assignment God gave you to take uh, the Wealth Conference, the Kingdom Wealth Conference to Aruba. 
Amen, amen. So this is your 10th year, guys. And the mandate behind this, which was, again, uh, sealed by my papa and mom, Ruth. As a matter of fact, she was at her first conference in Bahamas. Dr. Miles was nearby when he heard us. We were taking him back to the airport. And he said, what are you guys talking about? So we're going to have this conference. Tell me about it. What's the vision of it? We told him what the vision was. He said, the Lord will bless it. He said, but it's starting in the Bahamas. It won't be in the Bahamas. It's going to go all around the world. And it's going to impact families. It's going to impact the lives of God's kingdom. And so uh, God's citizens and his kingdom. So we're in our tent here and we're hosting it in, in, in Aruba. This is our third year, fourth year in Aruba at the Ritz Carlton Aruba. And for every one of these summits, guys, we have intercessors that are praying over this. We don't just come into an event in the kingdom. We seek the king first. The theme for this year is miracles of wealth miracles of wealth. Why? Because it is time. There should be not a broke person in the kingdom of God unless if they decide that they want to be, right? Because there's so much wealth that even if, if the father was to drop a billion on you today, heaven would not even would not even miss it, right? And so understanding that God wants us to be able to reclaim our kingdom inheritance. Wealth for you as a child of the king is your inheritance, but you have to be able to reclaim it. You got to be able to put a demand on it. And it has to be for kingdom advancement, not just for you. And so coming to this event, and this is what I know that God handpicked um, Dr. Miles uh, for this year. It's, it's handpicked man of God. And there is a setup in this year like I have never experienced it before. And so when you come in, you're going to come into a beautiful environment. We didn't choose the holiday in. I'm not putting down anything. God wants his children to be able to be in the environment where they belong. Because as a child of the king, you belong the best. You deserve the best. And you belong to be in the best. And so we bring you in that type of an environment, an increased environment that will stimulate you, that will cause all your, your natural senses to be stimulated. And now you're going to be in a room with a man of God that God has already put the, 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 the downloaded the word on the inside of him that we will need for this next level. If there's ever a time where finances are being released, where wealth, not only finances, Finances, forgive me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where wealth is being released into the hands right. of people, citizens, it is right now. Guys, it's crazy wealth. It's ridiculous wealth. Last year, the theme for the chamber was unexplainable wealth. And it's the unexplainable wealth that God wants to put in your hands, but you're going to have to go to a place. You're going to have to walk away for those of you that are entrepreneurs, because that's where my, my anointing is. For those of you that are in your business, you're going to have to walk away from your business. I'm telling you, you're going to have to set time aside July the 26th to the 29th. Set time aside for you to come into this place, to sit in that room under this man of God, to be able, and the other speakers that God has, and, and, and to be able to receive what God has for you, to give you the keys and the strategies of wealth so that you can do what? You can now put your hole on it, grab hold of it, your claim on it, and now you come back into your business and the download of kingdom ideas that God is going to give you. One thing about the kingdom, you don't have to be a copycat. One thing about the kingdom, you don't have to try to do something that somebody else is doing. Why? Because God has a unique assignment for you in the area of your calling and your gifting. And with it comes wealth that is unexplainable. So you're going to be in that room, guys. I want to encourage you to come. Stop what you're doing right now. Uh, I want you to text 856-249-7006. 856-249-7006. And I want you to text Aruba, 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 Aruba. And man of God, I'm telling you, Aruba will never, ever, ever be the same because your voice, that sound, and that's another thing how the king works. He works with sound. There's a sound that you carry. And that that's sound right. is now coming into the beautiful island of Aruba. Uh, Aruba has, has, has embraced us, but Aruba also embraced Dr. Miles Monroe. And I shared with you about that. I didn't even know he was there. And that confirmed my assignment. So, guys, I want you to show up to the Ritz-Carlton. I want you to go ahead and register first, right? Miracles of wealth. We're standing on Psalms 89.11. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and you are an heir, 
right? You're not a servant. You're an heir of the most high God. And so it's time for you to come into divine revelation of what the father has given you in order to take your place of one that he will use to help finance the kingdom. And I believe, man of God, those are the people that are in the room this year. Those that know that they have an assignment from the king. Those that know that there's a calling of God on their life to do more for the kingdom. Guys, when you have that, that pressing on your heart that you want to do more for the kingdom, you want to give more for the kingdom, guess what happened? He positions you and divinely orchestrates and divinely align relationships, downloads, supernatural downloads that this earth has not yet seen, that you now will, will, will have these products, services, patents. I'm telling you that the world will pay you for, and there's going to be massive wealth that will be released in the kingdom, land, land, and man of God, you know that book on, on Speak to the Earth. Oh my gosh, <laughs> land that's about, I did a teaching to the chamber on the, on in the kingdom, the power of land. You know, you, how, how do you know uh, 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 the wealth of a king, right? You want to look and see what he owns. And so to God be the glory, the power of a king. And so when you come to Aruba this year, guys, I'm telling you, you get ready. I want you, the moment you register, I want you to take a selfie because from the moment you go to Kingdom Chamber of Commerce and you click register now, your life is about to be transformed. We're bringing you into a beautiful environment. Look at the flamingos behind us. They're my favorite. We're bringing you in to a place of increase. We're bringing you a place where you could rest and, and relax, but also a place where you can hear the Holy Spirit like never before. And men of God, I know that the Holy Spirit is going to use you like never, ever, ever before this year. And, and as believers, guys, we cannot be complacent with our possession. And you don't have to be apologetic about wealth. I'm not apologetic about wealth. I grew up in an impoverished situation. I know what it is to sleep on the floor. Hello. So what you see here is not how it has always been. The kingdom has me where I am right now. Hallelujah. And the Lord told me it's okay for you to believe me for, for mansions, houses you did not build and wells you did not dig. That is the word. It's time for us now. We've prayed long enough. Now it's time for us to possess our possession. I believe in the kingdom of God right now that it's show and tell for the kingdom kingdom of God, man of God. It is show and tell for the kingdom of God. The world will come when they see that we have access and we have influence. Why? Because wealth is in our hands. Joseph of Arimathea, you teach, you teach us on that. He would have never been in the position where he is right now, where, where, where he was in order to have access to the body of our savior had he not have wealth. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. And so to God be the glory. So you need to be able to understand it's not about just being wise. The Bible talked about the how the the, the, the poor wise man was despised. So we want to be able to make sure that we have the wealth that goes with it. And, and I'm not ashamed of wealth. Hallelujah. And so I put it up there. And, and I think what has been a trick to the body of Christ is that if you love God, you got to be poor. But but that's not that's not scriptural, not the not not the word that 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 I read. And so it's time for us. We cannot be complacent in the area of taking our possession. We're to take territory and have dominion on planet Earth. And so it's high time for us to be able to expect more and believe God for more territory and believe God for wealth and believe God for the supernatural and a greater revelation of the supernatural in your life, his super on your natural, and you become unstoppable. Ha, ah, hallelujah. You're going to become unstoppable. So man of God, I'm excited. I'm thankful to God that you and Pastor Carmela will be there. I'm telling you, man, you messed me up. When you drop this on me, I, I, I travel with it. <laughs> yes, yeah, my, wife's, my wife's mentors. I call them my Carmela's mentors. So, wow, that's amazing. So, yeah, now, um, Mr. Uh, 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 by, the, uh, by the way, Dr. Angela, if you can check your, your phone, I, text you, I texted you something. Amen. Uh -huh. By the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, Jesus. So now, uh, this is exciting. We're about to, we're coming towards the end, as you know, but we, we don't end without impartation. But before we do, I just want to give you a quick update on the Crusades. Uh, on the Gideon 300, you know. So, Mr. Director, if we can give put up the Gideon 300 on there. But I want to thank God. I'm right here in Zambia. This is our studio. We are just beginning to make it. It's going to look like the one in the U.S. by the time we are done. Uh, but I've got new good news to tell. Uh, I've got good news to tell. 
many of you became part of the Gideon 300. And uh, uh, many of you have been talking to you, and some of you have yet to talk to us. You have no idea. My weeks are busy because I'm either praying with a Gideon 300 person or I'm doing a Zoom with those who gave $2,000 and above. But if they gave $1,000 to the Gideon 300, they have received a phone call from Dr. Miles, and I personally prayed and declared some things over their life. It's been amazing. In the process, I've got to know many of you. And because when the Lord uh, told me to come and do the crusades in Africa and leave America, which doesn't make sense for an African who's so in demand in America to leave all of America to come to Africa, doesn't make sense. But you see, kingdom is about obedience to the king. So God said to me, it's time for the harvest. And so we saw our, we put, we found, we, we, we customized our equipment. We have, it's a transformer truck we bought from China and becomes into a massive stage. We have got equipment to speak to 30, 40, 50,000 people. All kinds of gadgets have come. I'm here to report, as I'm telling you, the container has already crossed into, the, into, the, into Zambia. It's going to arrive tomorrow. So we will do a little, we, we will do an, a, a Facebook Live, but it arrives because I want to thank my Gideon 300. And then the truck is following after. So we're going to be able to give you a full report on video. The Lord told me, uh, Dr. Angela, that he, uh, friends, I want you to, to believe me for 300 people. We're going to throw $1,000 or more into the Gideon 300. He called them the Gideon 300 Operation African Crusade. Thus far, we have already raised over $200,000. This flyer needs to be updated. And I'm thankful to the people of God, but we need to get to $300,000. Mm. That means there's an opportunity for some of you, at least 100 people or 100 people who can give $1,000 or more, say to the mouse, I want to be part of the Gideon 300. What, what did, and the instruction God gave me is this. Everybody who gives a stone will be created. We, we are going to put your name on a stone, on the wall, on a, on a stone with your name, and we're going to put a stone. That is a stone. That's a memorial stone. Uh, and we're going to make it part of the altar for evangelism we're building in Africa. We're going to make it part of the altar. So every time we go to the crusade, we pray at that altar with the intercessors. Every time we come back we, from the crusade, all the decision cards of people got born again, all the cards on the miracles that took place will come on that altar. You'll be part of that inheritance because your name will be around that altar in the, in the I mean, it's going to be amazing. And at the same time, I give you a phone call and I pray with you and bless you. And you'll be amazed what has been happening to people that I prayed for. I didn't even get to see them. But then the people gave $2,000 or more to the Gideon 300. Uh, you can testify I've spent 45 minutes of my time on Zoom, face-to-face, -face, praying for you, advising you of issues of destiny. Well, I'm telling you, let's bring it to the number God wanted, $300,000. We are almost there. So if the Lord is speaking to you, you can really connect with us. Amen. And so I'm going to have about Dr. Angela, maybe just, uh, maybe, you know, Dr. Angela, maybe you can speak to this and just pray for the people who are going to give into the Gideon 300 before we pray, we activate the kingdom in people's lives before we, we, what do you have to say about this opportunity the king is giving his people? I just, I just texted my husband just now and I said, babe, he said, we're in. So first of all, we're not going to ask you to do something that we're not doing. So count us in for a thousand dollars, apostle. So we're one of your $1,000 seed sowers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know how many of us are on here. But, but $300,000 is nothing for the kingdom if we all come together and we do it. The thing about it with the assignment on your life, man of God, you should not have to be even worrying Glory about it. Glory to God. I am telling you guys that we're going to have to end this season, you know, to be able to, we don't want to just be busy. We want to be effective. We want to be focusing and, and, and flowing in the area of our gifting so that we could walk in the wealth that God has for us. So when assignments like this come up, four, five, six of us come together and say, man of God, it's done. Right. And so when you sow, and I want to, you know, we're not going to tip God. This is a, this is a, 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 a kingdom assignment. You have heard this word today. Many of you are blessed. There's been a stirring on your heart. I know it. Now you have to understand. Remember, I talked about that earlier. When I sowed that seed, 
When Paul and I came together and we agreed to sow the second time, we sold the first time. Some of you may have already sold into this, but when you sold the second time is when I realized what I did not realize is there was an alignment that God had for me with this powerful, powerful man of God that was preparing me for destiny the next level of my destiny. And so as you sow into this assignment, guys, Deuteronomy 111, may the Lord, the God of your fathers, add to you a thousand times as many as you are and bless you. I believe that this is a generational seed that you are about to put in that will affect your That's generation. Right. So when you take a thousand dollars or more, and I believe that there are a hundred of you on here that could sow a thousand dollars today. I've already given one. So we need 99 more to give a thousand dollars. Guys, if you want God to move in your life, nothing happens until you write that one with the three zeros. I'm telling you from my own life, nothing happens until you sow a thousand. You want to, you, you, you want to move. You want to see God's hand move. You want to walk through open doors. This is our season of supernatural open doors. That is the, 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 the theme for the chamber that God dropped in my spirit in November of 2022. He said, 2023, daughter, will be a year of supernatural open doors. And what has God been doing? Bursting down doors. One thing about God, listen, I'm telling you, he, he don't need no keys. To, no, in you go. And so, so when you sow your seed, when you sow your seed, I'm telling you guys, that seed goes into the ground. And even when you have forgotten about your seed, that seed is moving. And those chamber partners that are on here that are listening to me, you know, we're in the kingdom chamber of commerce to fund projects, right? God put wealth in her and wealth in into our hands so we could advance the kingdom. This is a kingdom advancement right here. So we need a hundred people right now, 99 people to sow a thousand dollars. I'm telling you guys, your marriage, if you want to see, I have a blessed marriage. Thank you, Jesus. But you know, if you want to see marriage takes work, but if you want to see your marriage turn around, I want to encourage you to sow this generational seed. Children, my children are blessed. Thank you, Jesus. I just spent time with Daniel. He's aerospace engineering, Haley's medical school. To God be the glory. Oh, when I sow seed, I point my seed. I just don't put the seed into the ground. I point it, whether it's for my marriage, whether it's for my children, whether it's for business, whether it's for investment opportunities. I'm telling you guys, whether it's for trading, I trade in a 6.7 trillion dollar a day market called the foreign exchange market, right? Whether it's for different investment projects, um, real estate, whatever you put, you you. I want you to assign the seed. For some of you, I'm sensing right now it's clarity. You're at a crossroad. I see people at a crossroad. Do I leave my job? Do I stay? Do I move on to another job? What do I do? I just retired. We don't retire in the kingdom. We refire in the kingdom. And I want to encourage you at this point, you know, really, 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 I'm sensing this so strong, man of God, that you guys stop right now. How do they give this? How do they give this $1,000? Um, um, okay, there it is. So at miles, uh, francismiles.com slash give. FrancisMiles.com slash give. So for those, the 99 of you that will sow $1,000. And then for those of you, I'm sensing that there's some of you on here. Excuse me. That could sow even more, <coughs> even more than $1,000. And I want you to go ahead and I want you to sow that. And for those of you, I want you to sow whatever you can sow, whatever it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Whatever it is that you can sow, I want you to go ahead and sow a seed. You don't want to come up, guys. You don't ever want to be in this position where you heard a word that could change your life, that could change your business, that could change your family, and you walk away thinking, I don't have it. No, you find this. This is a defining moment. Ever so often in life, we have defining moments. And this is a defining moment. That is, we help the man of God to fulfill this assignment, guess what? What you make happen for someone, God will make happen for you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press now, shake it together and, and running over. Guys, the life my husband and I live right now with our children, we live off of our giving. And when you give into the kingdom, the numbers don't make sense. <coughs> you know, uh, 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 Dr. Angela, it's really amazing. Uh, last week, I've asked my dad to show the people I was so blessed, you know, that um, 
David Livingstone, you know, many of you, have, if you've never done a research, that do a research, everybody on David Livingstone, but he was a missionary God sent to Zambia and 100 years, he, he prayed, I mean, he gave his life to the natives of my country. He, and he's, that's why the Victoria Falls and that city is mentioned, the city is named after him, he, but he named the, 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 the Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders of the world, he, the, uh, after Queen Victoria, who was a major support of the gospel. But as you can see on the light, one of God, I went, this was me last week. You can see me sitting over there. There was over 400, close to 400 church volunteers for the crusade that showed up to be ushers, greaters, I mean, security, man of God. And now today I found out that they, we are going to be having a, they are going to, they are planning a, the city. We're going to have a parade where the military uh, uh, parade, the, mu the music, the, the, the Zambian, uh, uh, Zambian Air Force uh, who a band is 40 of them in all their galia are going to do a match with us the day before the crusade to the crusade grounds to dedicate the ground before the crusade starts the following day. Woman of God, it, the hand of the Lord is upon it. What I'm saying is this, not one penny of that $1,000 seed, $2,000 seed for those who like to have time to see me face to face on Zoom, you know, as as has gone to Camilla and I because the King of Kings has been good to us in our personal economy, and we have actually given way more than what we're asking people to give into the into the harvest of souls. But I wanted to show that picture. That is us training people. Those people are about to be activated in about six weeks. Woman of God, all of those people who will be working to help me harvest souls. In a crowd of forty to fifty thousand people, they expect it will be the largest crusade for that city they have ever seen, and I'm so excited. So that is exactly what they are sowing into, and because the seed produced after its own kind, I believe for those of you who are believing God for family members who are not born again, a husband who's not born again, this is your point of contact to because the spirit of salvation will come, will chase them down because God will honor the seed that you sow. But again, I want that picture to see. I was blown away, woman of God. Somebody said she's in for 2,000. Somebody said they're in for 2,000. I'm oh. in for 2,000, my second offering. See, it's the same. I'm telling you, even if you've sown before, sowed again. Sow again. Praise the Lord. God bless wow. you, first lady. To God that be the Lord. That is Lord. amazing. Now, listen, first lady, whatever you Kimberly, are. Kimberly Kimberly said said Look God at bless that. you, Kimberly. Kimberly said 1,000. God bless you. Come on, guys. Keep typing it in there. Keep typing Thank it in you there. Jesus. Keep it on you. And, and Keep by the way, and by the way, salvation is from, Ruth said she's, yeah, $500. Come on, chamber partners. So uh, salvation has come to your house. The Lord showed me this one night in prayer, man of God. I was with the intercessors, and the Lord showed me families all at once getting born again, an entire household. Jesus. And they wake up in the morning and they're trying to speak English to each other. And they're speaking in their heavenly language, but they don't know what it is because they don't understand it. That's the season we're in. This is why this assignment that God has given you is so important. And this is why we must sow into it. Yolanda River said, I'm going to sow again. That's it, guys. That's it. Sow again. Somebody type that in the chat. Sow again. It's that second sowing, guys. I'm telling you, you sow. Give your best seed. I'm telling you, how do you know? Give that seed that hurts. That seed that doesn't make any sense. That was a seed that we sowed, not realizing what God was going to do with Dr. Miles. So to God be the glory, man of God. Wow, wow. Now, I want to, God, I want you, I want you to pray. I want to pray for the people. And I want you to activate the kingdom. Or activate the kingdom. Let you and I pray for them that God will act. Now, if you want the kingdom of God in its all, its power, its authority, its influence to be activated in you like never before, I want you to text the number one. Uh, on the, I want you on the on the text platform on the comment section. Just put the number one. That I mean, that's a powerful. You, I want because you are getting ready to keep, make the kingdom number one in your life. So everybody, was in the mouse, I want the grace to seek first the kingdom, and mm -hmm. and then the early, the early, Come on, there he comes. There he comes. Listen, it looks simple, but God is watching your obedience. You are telling the devil and his mother-in-law you're about to make the kingdom number one. 
And because you make the kingdom number one, you are going to experience what an African from Africa have experienced about the kingdom, what an uh, uh, African-American from America has experienced. It doesn't matter what we came from, two different backgrounds. What unites me and Dr. Angela is the gospel of the kingdom. When we sold ourselves to it, the Bible began to work. The Bible began to work. God began to uh, give us favor because Kim, what you need to do, Kim, Kim said she's in for a thousand. Thank you, Kim. Come wow. on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. Keep going. Thank Keep going. You. Thank you. I want my. I'm, I'm telling you, Doctor. We are, we are we are making these bricks with. We're gonna make these bricks with the name of the person in shrine. Like like Kim Cadro, we put that. I know, and then whatever um, you know, we put that in the stone, and God has built an altar. So every time you pray, I remember the Gideon three hundred and their descendants. This is legacy giving. I, I'm not playing with God. This is important to the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Now put that one 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 saying, Doctor uh, Angela, why don't you activate? Pray right now and pray, pray, pray. And I'm gonna also pray, but I'm gonna pray after you. Pray that the kingdom will come alive and pray for those, uh, pray for the kingdom will come alive for the people the way it, the Lord has come, it has come alive for you and I. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Angela, $1,000 Canadian. Thank you, Lord. And before you, Father, we decree and declare right now, let your kingdom come, Lord God. 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 Father, let it be established. Yes. Earth, Father, Lord God, as it is in heaven, Lord God. Father, we decree and declare, Lord God, kingdom activation right now. We thank you for kingdom activation right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, under those, those that are under the sound of our voices right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we thank you for the illumination, Lord God, of their understanding, Lord God. We thank you for a supernatural hunger for the kingdom, Lord God. Father, that they will never have to worry about what they're going to eat. They'll never worry about what they're going to wear. Yes. They're going to seek first, 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 first. They're going to make your kingdom first priority, Father. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you're giving them the key to the kingdom. Father, a hunger in them like oh, never. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, one thing we know about Rebel. you, God, that you just don't give everything just, just to give to anybody, Lord God, but for those that are, hungry, those that are hungry, yes. God, you're feeding them right now. I see a portal that's open right now. A portal is open right now. A portal for the revelation of the kingdom. I thank you that your eyes are being illuminated right now. Your ears, hallelujah, are being in tune to the kingdom. Direct kingdom downloads that are coming right now in the name of Jesus upon you. Some of you are sensing a feeling. You're like, I don't know why I feel this way. Just receive, just receive, receive your kingdom activation. The gifts that the Father gave you that, that has been dormant. Ability, how yes. is on the inside of you that sleeping giant, right? Your potential is being awoken. Hallelujah, Father. Their assignment, the very thing you're on planet Earth to fulfill, Lord God. The assignment, Lord God, that no one else could fulfill, Father, but them, Lord God, is being activated right now. And I also see some supernatural turnaround. You were going in one direction, but now suddenly you're brought back again to exactly where you need to be. And now in you're the name of Jesus. To that very thing that God has called you to do. I see families in the name of Jesus. because of the kingdom to serve the kingdom together to advance the kingdom together. It's not just about preaching the word, but now the manifestation where you make yourself available to be able to fund the work of the kingdom. And so we thank you for a release of wealth. We thank you for the supernatural being released. We thank you for wealth being released. We thank you for those of you that are praying and saying, God, give me wealth. Give me wealth so I could, not for me, but so I could help advance the kingdom. I want to be one of your kingdom financiers. Father, help me. To the Lord God, I come into alignment even with this work that's before me, Father. And for those of you who may not even have the $1,000, 
pray and ask the Lord, Father, show me ways to get it and make a pledge to this ministry. Say, Dr. Dr. Miles, I want to come alongside you and I want to support you. I'll pay it in two. I'll pay it in three. And so, Father, we thank you for this activation right now. We thank you, Lord God, for things that are changing in the lives of your children. Even now, Father, Lord God, businesses that are starting, businesses that are expanding. Yes, living God. Yes, living God. In the name of Jesus. Contracts, contracts that you don't even have to go fight for. The thing about the kingdom, oh, we don't God, 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 God. The thing about the kingdom is that it just comes to you. Why? Because you're spending time with the king. You're in hot pursuit of the king. He said, and when you seek me first, hallelujah, when you're in passionate pursuit of me, he said, all these things are going to be added. The idea, right. the contract, unexpected income coming, checks in the mail that are coming in. Yes, Lord. They acquired. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. New investments. Hallelujah, Lord God. For in investment projects. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for raising up wealthy ones in the body of Christ right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Unexplainable wealth, Father, Lord God. Those who recognize that wealth is their birthright. And so, Father, we bless you and we thank you right now for that supernatural wealth activation that has gone forth. Father, we call forth kingdom businesses, Lord God. Yes, Amen. Lord. Yours, Lord God, to step up, Lord God, and to say, here I am, Lord God, send me. Here I am, Lord God, use me. And so, Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name that lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 My God. <laughs> I, and I just had one thing I want to pray, Dr. Anja. God, just put it upon my spirit. Okay? Uh, it, uh, no, actually, thank you, Holy Spirit. Again, there are two things he wants me to pray for. Okay, and, and God says you are the custodian of the earth. You are the custodian of the revelation of speaking to the earth. He said, friends, I want you to command the earth to swallow, to open up, to do things, to swallow everything in their life that opposes the kingdom. So, Father, right now, in the name of Yeshua, I, for those that are under the sound of my voice, those, those, both live and those that will listen be, beyond be beyond the live experience because the word, the word of the Lord and its anointing is ever fresh, it's ever live. Lord, I declare, I decree by the mystery of what you have given me to control the earth. I command the earth all over the world. I said, earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. I command you as a custodian of this revelation that open your mouth and begin to swallow everything. I mean, everything that opposes the kingdom in the lives of these dear and precious children of God. In Jesus' name, everything that will cause them to take one step forward, to take ten, only to take five steps backwards, swallow in the name of Jesus. For I declare from today that the earth will begin to cooperate with your ascending in the kingdom in Jesus' name. Properties are being released, lands are being released, uh, 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 um, uh, inheritances are being released. By the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. I declare this by the Holy Ghost. And I also command the earth to vomit upon you new businesses. I command you. I command the earth to vomit upon you new businesses. That will that when you come to Aruba, you'll be like, man of God, when I lay, I heard you. And Dr. Angela, I had no, I was an employee. I had a great job. But ever since I, that night, I went to sleep and an angel visited me. God visited me, and this is my business, and I flew in here with some of my staff members to be in Aruba. I see there are many of you who are, who are desiring to come to Aruba, and the Lord if Father says, ask of me as you're there. Don't look at your pocket, said the Lord. If you want to go in Aruba, God says, ask me. Ask me, and I will show you, I will do for you what will blow your mind. Many of you will be like, I can't believe I'm in Aruba when you're at the airport coming in. You'll be like, I can't believe, I just never thought it was possible. But that's the kind of God we serve is going to make it possible in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Dr. Angela, when I was, God has given me this word of knowledge, you know, I'm reminded when I took 42 people to, to, to tour the nation of Israel, uh, it was the 70th year of, the, of Israel becoming a nation since the declaration by the United Nations in 1948. So we are going in 2018. There was a woman who was standing 70 in the church you came to in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And she came to me after a service. 
she was crying. I said, "What's?" I, I said, "What's? What's wrong, daughter?" She said, "I want to be. I want. I want so bad to be in Israel because Israel is turning seventy. I'm turning seventy. It will be so prophetic for me to be in the Holy Land, celebrating seventy years of my life and seventy years of Israel becoming a nation." She cried, but I don't have the money. And as she was talking, God said to her, he said, he said to me, tell her, herein lies the problem. That she's talking to money before she talks to her dad. I said to her, I said, woman, why are you talking about money? Well, I said, listen, have you talked to your dad? And I didn't use God because God is religious. Some people don't connect. Mm -hmm. See, God, tell her, have you spoke to dad? Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, I, I said, I said, well, you, I said, my, you know, my, I said, no, no, you're dead in heaven. I said, no, I'm not. He said, he said, he said, and I said to him, so why are you allowing money that is not your dad to convince you you can't go to Israel to to have your celeb to celebrate your seventieth day birthday in style when your heavenly father knows what that means to you? Mm. She cried, and I mm. said, you need to repent. In front of me, Dr. Angela, she repented. The trip was costing $4,000. Next week, somebody gave, in my church, gave her, gave her a gift of going, paid for the whole, somebody gave her a package to join us, to go to Israel. She never paid a dime, but boy, she was with us in Israel. And we brought, and I remember when we, get, we, we get, went to the empty tomb is where we opened up a birthday cake for her. Can you imagine celebrating your birthday at 70 years old beyond, before the empty tomb? She was wasted, but she almost missed it because she was he, listening to money and never took time to talk to dad, our mm -hmm. heavenly father. Now, I believe... To me, moment of God, this is why so many believers miss it. Because when you're in the kingdom, it's not like, do I have it? No. Does the king have it? You put a demand. Yeah, it shows up on demand. It shows up on demand. Everything we need shows does up on demand. my father and my king have it? And does the king want me to go? If he wants that, and, 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 and if it gives you a witness, the devil is alive. You are going to be in Aruba <laughs> with that and an anointing that will change your life. Hallelujah. Well, last words, Apostle, before we close. Listen, I'm just so blessed. Truly, truly. I, I, I just literally saw debts being demolished. For those that are sowing $1,000, Apostle, I saw their debt being wiped off, paid in full. Come on now. For those that are sowing into this Gideon 300, $1,000 or more, I literally just saw cancel, cancel, cancel. Debt's being canceled. And so to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, guys, I want you to join me in Aruba. I'm telling you, like the man of God said, and he said this on my show, he said that he's going to anoint. What did you say, man of God? You're going to anoint everybody. You, you bring I'm gonna anoint. I'm gonna anoint everybody, and we are also gonna speak to the earth. I'm telling you, this is going to be a conference like no other. When I teach on the order, I'm gonna teach on the order of the Joseph of Arimathea, and causing the earth to come alive. Those three things, we're gonna combine them, hybrid them. I can guarantee you this: that whosoever comes to Aruba, when they live. I don't care the level of income they're making. That's the poorest they'll ever be in their lifetime. That's what God has shown me. So I don't care if you come to Aruba making $10 million. That is your poorest you ever be. <laughs> That's, and, and I'm going to play. God has spoken to me. I'm ready. Come How on, come on, come on. I'm telling you guys, you could be making $12,000 a year or $6,000 a year, whatever you're making, guys, when you're in the kingdom, everything multiplies. When you're in the kingdom, everything multiplies. Remember the young boy, five loaves and two fish? They did not feed 5,000 adults plus children. And then there were baskets left over. Why are we going to limit the king? That's when you get that revelation that everything I need shows up on demand. Guys, for me to do my assignment, it shows up on demand. We need to go here. We need to do that. God takes care of it. And will he not take care of you? He's going to take care of you. So go ahead. The first thing you need to do, get registered. Go to kingdomchamberofcommerce.org. Go to kingdomchamberofcommerce. It's $4.99. 
It starts at $4.99, and then there's $5.99 different packages. But go ahead and get registered on the website, kingdomchamberofcommerce.org. Tell yourself you're going to be there. Why? Because I'm telling you, as Dr. Miles have always said this, he said that many times your blessing is not even in the country where you are. And so sometimes you need to get your, your little behind on an airplane. Forgive me, man of God. And you need I, to. I, I, know what, I, I know what you're doing. I, 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 I get you. And, Go ahead. and you need to get to the place that you're like, you're so sick and tired of being sick and tired of being honest with yourself to your own self. Be true. It's not working for you. Which means now that if it's not working for you, you need to be in a place where you're going to get revelation for you to now start flowing into what will work for you. Guys, it's not about being busy. It's about you being effective in your kingdom assignments. So I'm telling you, your life's about to change. Bring your husband, bring your children with you and come to Aruba. I can't wait to see you. Text 856-249-7006. Uh, text Aruba to 856-249-7006 or just go to the website, Kingdom Chamber of Commerce and register their payment plans there. You could pay in four, pay in five, pay in whatever. It's all there at the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce. And you're going to get an opportunity to sit with the man of God, sit with the woman of God and be in that environment, guys, where your environment, when you come back, won't even be able to contain you because nobody will understand you. You won't even understand you. Your life's about to be transformed. I'm going to see you in Aruba. And from this day, those who sold that thousand dollars earlier, miracles are about to follow you. Miracles of wealth. I'm telling you, please share your praise report because I'm seeing the thousand dollars that they're saying I'm sowing, man of God. And so I'm excited about that, guys. I will see you. What of us in Zambia, how are visa pro processments coming there? Well, um, in the islands, in the islands, you just get on a plane. They don't have. I, I don't think you have. You need a visa because I remember more, many Africans when they came to Dr. Miles Monroe. You see, the islands are different from the US. You you can just they are, they are tourist destinations, so their immigration policies are very relaxed. They allow you to get a visa at the airport. Is that the same for Aruba? I have to double check, but if they go ahead and just send an email, just send the go to kingdomchamberofcommerce.org and send an email, I believe info at kingdomchamberofcommerce.org, info at kingdomchamberofcommerce.org, and one of our team members will double check it for you. But I'm telling you guys, if you desire to be there, um, you know, uh, we're, we're going to get you there. Is there live streaming we can purchase? You know, there's always live streaming, but there's something about when you're in the room, right, men of God? <laughs> yes, well, especially with this location. Because what, what, the reason I want you in Aruba, because environments matter. Yes, I think there are live streaming events that are normal. Com this is not a normal conference. We are trying to get people smell and look and feel how kingship looks like because the devil has so robbed us that we've taken on many of us poverty as a second cousin we've kind of found you know we want to it's an environment god made eden because he wanted adam to know kingship as an environment and when he lost that environment he he, he began to toil and sweat aruba is to remind you as we're talking about kingship as we're talking about the, the kingdom principles for wealth creation. We want you to be in an environment that tells you, you know what? If God can get me here, he can get me there. You know? And, 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 and the, you know, so I think for now, I think that uh, that's, that will be my answer uh, to that. Now, woman of God, I have another meeting coming up, but I love it here. So for more details, oh, hey amen. Let's, uh, for more details, Jay. You know, let's remove that E. For more details, wrong, spelled, spelled wrong. For more details, <laughs> amen. I mean, I believe in excellence of also. I'll correct in real time. Amen. <laughs> for more details, you, you will see the email. Yeah, for more details, email info at kingdomchamberofcommerce.org and they'll answer more questions than this show can answer. But guess what? I wanted to tell, I want to say, I felt something. The, uh, and you, I mean, you didn't ask me to do this, but I want, I'm a giver. So everybody who comes to Aruba in their package, I'm gonna give you, woman of God, the uh, give you um, uh, my book in, in, in their parcel. I want them to have a, a free book of Joseph of Arimathea, and then my latest book. You've never been seen it. It's a, my small book. I'm finishing it. It's called Mobilizing the Four Winds for Kingdom Advancement. So I'm, those two books I'll give you for free in the package of everybody who comes to the island. 
and I'm going to autograph. It will already be autographed for them, and it will be in their beautiful package as they arrive at the Reese Carlton. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I love, love you. Guys. And give my love to Bob Harrison. That's another champion there. I love. I miss Bob. Tell him my wife and I we're coming to Hawaii next year. We cannot miss increase in 2024. We will be there. But amen. I want everybody, whatever you are, uh, if you are sick in your body, put your hand where your body is. If you're thanking it for somebody else, do it. Because you know we're healing ministry, so we do this healing. It can happen in 10 seconds in Jesus' name. Father, right now, as your their hands are placed where the disease is, in Jesus' name, or if they're standing on behalf of a child or a daughter or somebody that's sick, Lord, I command the spirit of infirmity. I say, be gone in Jesus' name. There is somebody who's being healed from a very adverse effect. Actually, itching that's coming on your skin because of the of the vaccine of the shot. They just called the shot that the COVID shot. But there's been a lot of itching. I see you going like this, you know. And God says the itching is going away, and you've been very worried. But God says, "Did I not say they shall drink poison and nothing shall hurt them?" So right now, God is giving that promise to everybody who's worried about that. You are being healed right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name. There is a a, a woman with serious insomnia. Uh, I mean, you you can't go to sleep, boy. You can't go to sleep. You have. I see you tossing and turning around your bed. God. Is giving you the anointing for sleep. Is is delivering you from that demon of insomnia because it's time for you to really enjoy sleep. God is giving it to you. Let us know what God is doing. There are miracles happening. Whether I call it out or not, you'll receive your miracle right now in Jesus' name. Until next time, this is your Dr. Francis Miles saying shalom, shalom. We love you and may God bless you and cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. And see, amen. First, and amen. amen. God yeah. righteousness and all word. the things you added. Praise amen. God. Thank you. God bless you, Naruba. To the island of the sea. Welcome to the island. <laughs>